Thank you. That concludes topical questions. The next item of business is a debate on motions 12210 and 12211 in the name of Hamza Youssef on appointment of Scottish ministers and junior Scottish ministers. And I invite members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons. And I call on the First Minister to speak to and move the motions. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Before I do speak to my motion, can I first of all welcome Tim Eagle uh, to the Scottish Parliament. Uh, we will have lots of political uh, differences of that, there's simply no doubt. But can I genuinely wish uh, him well? I don't think there's any greater honour than being able to represent your community in this nation's parliament. So I wish you all the very best uh, in the role that you take up. Similarly, let me also pay tribute to Donald Cameron, MSP, who, again, for all of our political differences, I always thought was very considered, uh, very thoughtful, quite often, not always, but quite often non-partisan as well. Traits that I would suggest are very much needed in the Scotland office, yeah. uh, presiding uh, officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, w I wish to pay uh, Donald Cameron tribute uh, for always, uh, or, or very often, uh, working very constructively uh, with uh, the Scottish uh, Government. And I wish uh, him well look forward to engaging with him. Uh, no doubt, in due course. Uh, presenting officer to the motion in my name, which I, of course, move, uh, I hope to, uh, that Parliament will agree uh, that Fiona Hislop be appointed as Cabinet Secretary, that CoCab Stewart and Jim Fairley be appointed as Ministers in the Scottish Government. But let me start by paying tribute to Eleanor Whittam. Uh, she's been a valued member of my ministerial team since 2022, and she stepped down, uh, as she has said publicly, uh, from her current role as Drugs and Alcohol Policy Minister for Health Reasons. Uh, importantly, I know those who are working collectively to address the harm that Scotland is experiencing due to drugs and alcohol, in particular those with lived experience, greatly appreciated Eleanor's open, honest and compassionate manner and indeed her work in taking forward proposals for reviewing drug laws. I sincerely hope that we'll see Eleanor back in ministerial office in the future and can I commend her for speaking courageously about her health and wish her all the very best for the future. Let me also thank Michael Matheson for his work in government over the past 30 years as Net Zero Secretary, as Justice Secretary, and of course, as re most recently, as Health Secretary. He had many notable achievements to his name and through these roles, undoubtedly, improved the lives of many people across the country. Of course, most recently as Health Secretary, he secured a fair deal with our NHS uh, Scotland junior doctors and ensured that Scotland continues to be the only nation in the UK there has not lost a single day to strike action. Let me turn to those who are joining government for the first time, CoCab Stewart and Jim Fairley. CoCab and Jim bring a wealth of significant professional experience to the roles which will translate well into ministerial office. The appointment of CoCab Stewart as Minister for Culture, Europe and International Development is a historic moment for this government uh, and for this parliament. CoCab, uh, as many will know, was a primary teacher in Glasgow and Edinburgh for three decades before becoming the first woman of colour to be elected to the Scottish Parliament in 2021. She's now the first woman of colour to hold ministerial office in the Scottish Government. And, Presiding Officer, I'm really proud to lead a party that has worked hard over many years to ensure a much greater diversity in our national parliament, whether it was the late and great Bashir Ahmed becoming the first person of colour to be elected to this parliament, or indeed, as I've mentioned, CoCab now becoming the first woman of colour to serve in our government. I think we should all be proud of the progress that we're making to ensure that this parliament reflects the community, better reflects the communities that we all seek uh, to serve. Now, equally, of course, we all recognise there is still much work in that regard to do. I'm sure that uh, CoCab's experience as convener of the Parliament's Equalities, Human Rights and Civil Justice Committee, uh, she will bring that experience uh, to her new role. And of course, CoCab does take over from Christina McKelvey, who will now report directly to me as Minister for Drugs and Alcohol Policy. And I know she is looking forward to the challenges, but also the opportunities ahead. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that Christina will take on this role with the empathy and the compassion that she has brought to every single role she has had in government. Uh, Jim Fairley uh, will become Minister for Agriculture and Connectivity as a former sheep farmer and the man who founded Scotland's first farmer's market in Perth more than two decades ago. He's well versed in the needs of the agriculture and farming sector. I'm pleased to say that he's already using his extensive experience in rural affairs, business and food and drink to drive forward this government's priorities and stand up for rural Scotland. He is an excellent addition 
to the ministerial team into government. I'm also seeking Parliament's approval for the appointment of Fiona Hislop as the Cabinet uh, Secretary. I'm deeply proud of the fact uh, that her introduction to Cabinet means that uh, we believe we have the highest proportion of women in any government in the world in the Scottish Government. Again, something I think we should all take great pride in. Fiona Hislop is one of the most formidable, uh, experienced and indeed accomplished ministers in government. She has significant achievements throughout uh, the life, her life in, in government, not least as the minister who is responsible for abolishing the backdoor tuition fees that were foisted on Scotland by the Labour and Liberal Democrats uh, back in the early days of devolution. But since her appointment as Minister for Transport last year, she's overseen progress on leaving Mouth Rail Link, the removal of peak fares across all ScotRail services, and of course bringing the Caledonian Sleeper service into public ownership. Uh, two other Cabinet Secretaries take up new and expanded roles that reflect the Government's priorities. Neil Gray, who has become Cabinet Secretary for Health, has proved himself as a highly capable Cabinet Secretary since his appointment. He is well respected across uh, the business community and he engages well, we know, with uh, stakeholders and I know he will bring the exact same energy, the same drive uh, to his new brief. And he will be charged with supporting the most important institution and the most precious institution in our country, the National Health Service. Uh, he will support its recovery from COVID, work on bringing down waiting times and reforming the service to improve outcomes for patients. Uh, Manny McAllen is taking on uh, the new expanded brief of Economy Net Zero and Energy. It is right to combine these portfolios given the massive economic opportunity of the green economy. Uh, this is more important now given the attempts by certainly Westminster-based parties to derail Scotland's green revolution. So Scotland has formidable strengths in the energy sector and building on these strengths will be at the very forefront of the global race to net zero and home to further green investments, uh, jobs and, and the well-being economy. Um, Mary, of course, will also be responsible for driving forward a green industrial strategy and the refresh of the national strategy for economic transformation in the coming months. To conclude, presiding officer, uh, these new appointments mean we have a strong team across government, uh, a diverse team across government and with our green partners and wider SNP parliamentary group, which is focused on this government's priorities and the missions that drive them, namely equality, uh, opportunity and community. This is the team that will continue to deliver and to stand up for the people of Scotland and, of course, advocate that the best future for our country is one where all decisions about Scotland are made by the people of Scotland. So I ask Parliament to support these appointments today and I'm delighted to move the motion in my name. Thank you. And I now call on Craig Hoy. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. And can I uh, echo the First Minister's welcome to uh, my newest uh, colleague, uh, Tim Eagle, uh, here in Parliament today? and also to uh, pay tribute to uh, Donald Cameron. He was a fine parliamentarian in this place, and I'm sure that he will be a fine minister uh, in the Scotland office. Presiding officer, this is a reshuffle that the First Minister did not want to make. A reshuffle brought about by the actions of Michael Matheson, someone that Hamza Youssef believed to be a man of integrity, a man who had to sack himself because the First Minister was too weak to do so. This winter, Michael Matheson should have been saving our NHS, but he spent it instead trying to save his own career. Whether misleading the media or mismanaging our health service, SNP ministers have repeatedly failed the accountability test. Presiding officer, Mr Matheson leaves government without a shred of integrity. But having failed to dismiss him, Hamza Youssef is left without a shred of credibility. For the First Minister, this reshuffle was a missed opportunity, a missed opportunity to reset his failing leadership, a missed opportunity to regain control of the agenda, a missed opportunity to kick, a missed opportunity to kick the Greens into touch. And he ducked it because the green tail continues to wag the SNP dog. Let us hear Mr and Hoy. Regardless, and, regardless, and regardless of how far and, has, and how fast she falls, this is still a government which cannot escape the long shadow cast by Nicola Sturgeon. So Fiona Hislop and I welcome Fiona Hislop's appointment and I recognise the uh, First Minister uh, recognising that he is blazing a trail in bringing more women into his cabinet and it is good to see her in a role as Transport Secretary. But such is the influence of the Greens that this government is now recycling its cabinet ministers. 
We wish her well, and in the words of Kate Forbes, we hope that she has more success making the trains run on time than her predecessors. As Neil Gray takes over where others, including Hamza Youssef himself, has failed, uh, it is a critical role, and we wish, uh, we wish uh, Mr Gray well in it, and we, work, uh, we look forward to working uh, with him. But he must simply see, as he takes on this new role, that doing more of the same won't deliver the change that patients so clearly need. Two years after Hamza Youssef announced an NHS recovery plan, our NHS is still in crisis. Surely, the First Minister can now see what every patient in Scotland sees, that his recovery plan has failed and it should now be scrapped. And while there is no place in his government for Kate Forbes, her close ally, Jim Fairley, takes up a rural post. The First Minister is reworking an old proverb. He is keeping his friends close, but the friends of his enemies even closer. <laughs> Presiding officer, I would like to welcome Cocab Stewart to the government. It was inspiring, as the First Minister said, to see the first woman of colour join a Scottish administration. And I wish her well as the new Minister for Culture, Europe and International Development. And given how frequently it's nice to see him here in the chamber today, given how frequently her boss Angus Robertson's out of the country topping up his air miles, I'm sure she'll be kept very busy <laughs> deputising for him. Presiding officer, Let's presiding hear officer, Mr. Hoy. Presiding officer, for the sake of the country, for the sake of our farmers, our hospitals, our roads and our railways, I hope that these new ministers will tackle the problems that the SNP has created and neglected over the last 17 years. But sadly, I do not live in hope. But as the new ministers climb aboard Hamza Youssef's sinking ship, they can take comfort from one fact. So long as the First Minister remains in Butte House, their jobs are secure. Because the real lesson from the Michael Matheson scandal is this. Hamza Youssef would rather burn what's left of his own credibility than, the, than take action against one of his own ministers. Presiding officer, this is just the latest example of an SNP government distracted by division and pursuing the wrong priorities. Scotland surely deserves better than this. Thank you. I now call on Jackie Bailey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I also pay tribute to Donald Cameron and welcome Tim Eagle to this Parliament and just say to him he has big shoes to fill. Um, on behalf of the Scottish Labour Party, I would also like to welcome Jim Fairley and Calcub Stewart to their appointments as Ministers for the first time and to Fiona Hislop, who is the SNP's very own comeback Queen. Before turning to each of the members in turn, let me make a few general observations because these new ministers do have a hard task ahead of them. They have to wrestle with poor budget decisions in their portfolios. They have to wrestle with keeping their Green Party colleagues on side, which I know Jim Fairley has views about, um, and with ensuring their devices have the correct data packages applied when they go on holiday, because roaming charges, or more accurately, the cover-up of them, is why we are here today. So we have an SNP government with 30 cabinet secretaries and ministers, the largest of governments ever in Scotland at a cost of more than £3 million, and that is salaries alone. The question I keep asking myself is, are they worth it? With ferries not sailing, the A9 not being duelled, hospital and GP surgeries cancelled, 830,000 Scots on waiting lists, I fear the answer is no. The government is failing, and I'm not convinced that the addition of more ministers will stop the ship from sinking. If the SNP government continues to grow, as it has done since 2007, then for those who didn't get picked this time, I'm sure there is still um, plenty of opportunity to get a turn before 2026. Let me welcome Jim Fairley in particular to his post as Minister for Agriculture and Connectivity. Um, Mr Fairley is well liked by all across this chamber and his knowledge in the agriculture sector will no doubt be invaluable to Parliament. But Mr Fairley does come from one of the SNP's factions advocating change rather than the status quo. And I think it is recognised he is the fig leaf for the First Minister who didn't want to recruit the actual change agenda candidate, Kate Forbes, to his team. I'm sure that Mr Fairley will be more than up to the job in her absence. Let me also welcome Cal Cab Stewart to a new position 
as Minister for Culture, Europe and International Development and recognise that she becomes the first woman of colour to become a minister in Scotland and I congratulate her for that achievement. But this brief does bring with it a lot of travel. In fact, many positions in the Scottish Government seem to include a fair bit of globetrotting, but I will leave it to Ms Stewart to decide if charging the taxpayer £11,000 to deliver a 15-minute speech in Los Angeles is better value than popping in via Zoom. But I would also like to welcome Fiona Hislop back to the Scottish Government in her role as Cabinet Secretary for Transport. She was doing the same job as a minister and is clearly being promoted because she knows where the bodies are buried with the ferry fiasco and the lack of duelling of the A9. Members here, as long as I have been, will know that Ms Hislop has worn many hats under each of the SNP's First Ministers, so she will doubtlessly bring a wealth of knowledge to the brief. In the Cabinet, then demoted by both former SNP First Ministers, Fiona Hislop has survived them all. I am reminded of Persephone, who in Greek mythology leaves the underworld for six months of the year and goes back for the remaining six. I do hope, for Fiona Hislop's sake, that she does not make it out of the underworld she is about to enter, at least occasionally. Presiding officer, whilst I want to offer the Scottish Labour Party's good wishes to the three members going into government today, it is a government that is tired, out of ideas and out of road. Yeah. Scotland has got worse under the SNP, yeah. and no matter how gifted these individuals may be, the die is cast. Change is coming. Yeah. Thank you. And I now call on Gillian Mackay. Thanks, Presiding Officer. Could I also welcome Tim Eagle to the Chamber, and I sincerely hope his jokes are better than Craig Hoy's. <laughs> I want to begin, presiding officer, by thanking those who are leaving their positions in government for all their work. I have found both Eleanor Whittam and Michael Matheson to be constructive and have engaged well with me on a variety of issues. I am very much looking forward to working with both Neil Gray in his new role as Cabinet Secretary for Health and Christina McKelvey as the new Minister for Alcohol and Drugs Policy. I, now, I know how fierce they both are in their approach to their portfolios. There are many challenges to deal with. And I'm sure they will both take the opportunity and the, the opportunity to be both open and collaborative as their predecessors have. My party are hugely pleased to see the return of transport to a cabinet secretary position and congratulate Fiona Hislop on her return to cabinet. My colleagues are looking forward to continuing to work with her on cutting car miles, improving rail and bus services and improving connectivity across the country. I also want to congratulate Mary McCallan on her expanded portfolio, joining up the economy and Net Zero we hope will open all the opportunities of a green economy. Finally, to the two new ministers, Jim Fairley and Cocab Stewart. Congratulations to you both on your first appointment in government. I know my colleagues are looking forward to working with both of you. And I think, presiding officer, it is worth noting the significance of Cocab Stewart's appointment in making her the first woman of colour to enter government making not just Parliament, but government, better reflect Scotland as a whole. We hope that collectively, recess has given you some time to get to grips with your new portfolios, even if it hasn't given you a rest. Your friends and families are, I'm sure, very proud of you all, and we're, working, and we're looking forward to working with you for what's next to bring Scotland a bright future. Thank you, and I now call on the First Minister to respond. Uh, Presiding officer, can I start with uh, what I thought was the best contribution, uh, Gillian Mackay's. Uh, it was thoughtful, it was considered, uh, and I thought was rose really to the occasion. I have to say, I always, and I have sat through many of these uh, contributions before uh, over the years, and I always find it genuinely sad that uh, politicians are unable to rise to the occasion, yeah. no matter. Yeah. Uh, no matter what the, the, the occasion is. I mean, this is an important day, particularly for those that are entering government uh, for the first time. And for literally five minutes, uh, all you have to do really is rise uh, to the occasion. And Craig Hoy singularly failed to do that. No wonder we heard... No wonder... No wonder, presenting officer, we heard cries of bring back Jackson. Bring back Jackson. And uh, I fully endorse 
uh, those cries. Though uh, I, I do get it, planning officer Craig Hoy uh, really has uh, no hope of ministerial office uh, unless he uh, donates to the Tory party. He might well become a lord and then, of course, be brought back into the squalid office. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, that might that might well uh, happen uh, to him. In terms of um, Jackie Bailey's. Uh, contribution. Uh, I, I tend to believe that it's better to let the Scottish people have their verdict on whether or not we have done a good job or not. That's why we were elected, of course, in 2007. We were re-elected in 2011, re-elected in 2016, re-elected in 2021. And the one thing I can say with Jackie Bailey is she shouts, you're on your way out. Uh, she shouts uh, that your time has come. She shouts the die is cast. Uh, all I can say to Jackie Bailey uh, is uh, that she is short of policy ideas, short of any constructive ideas, but full of hubris. And people will see through that time and time again. And it is a, it is a very unique, a very, very unique Scottish Labour trait, of course, that they take the people of this country uh, for granted. And she asks, uh, was it worth it? Is it worth it having an SNP government? I would suggest asking those 93,000 children that are no longer in poverty yeah, yeah. because of the action that we take, is it worth it? What about those record young people from areas of deprivation who are now going to university, is it worth it? Or the under 22s with free bus travel and so on and so forth. But I can see the presiding officer, my time is up. I will end exactly where I started, presiding officer. Uh, I, will, I will end Let's exactly the first where minister. I started, presiding officer and saying uh, that I hope that the Parliament will agree to the changes that I've made. And in particular, can I welcome Jim Fairley and Co-Cab Stewart to the Government, uh, and I have no doubt that they will serve this Government well and this country well too, Presiding Officer. Thank you. There are two questions to be put. The first question is that motion 12210, in the name of Hamza Youssef, on appointment of Scottish Minister, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we'll move to a vote and there'll be a short suspension to allow members to access the digital voting system.